Hello, this is Matt Yasa, and welcome to a new episode of Glass Science. Now, when I connect the smaller flare tube to the larger diameter tube, I want to make sure both ends are very, very hot. And I want to make that connection in the flame. And then you might end up with a little bit of excess glass. Just go ahead and pull out a little bit and I'll straighten up that connection. If you start to pull when it's too cold, you'll end up creating what's called a devitrification, which looks like a whitish kind of haze over the glass. And that's when the molecules in the glass, which are normally a free flowing amorphous solid, end up crystallizing, making more of a structure. And real quick, I was planning to continue the project with that tube, which you actually might have noticed from the previous video, the flaring video. But I set it down on my kiln to rest as I went to the restroom. And as you can probably guess, when I came back, I accidentally knocked it off onto the floor. So I went ahead and opened up a couple blow tubes and I'll go ahead and start on uh, another bubble here. And I'll just go ahead and start picking out some glass on this 40 millimeter tube. And it's gonna start to bring that air pocket towards the surface so that when I apply the heat and just give it a small puff, it'll pop a hole. And now that I have it opened up, I'll go ahead and give it a little bit of work with the brass reamer so I can connect up this blow tube. And of course you wanna make the connection inside the flame here. It was just outside so you could see what was going on. I don't have the didymium filter on. It just kind of distorts the image a little bit, the quality. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and melt down this section real quick to blow out another bubble. And I'll go ahead and try to pull a point, which they call it when you essentially just pull out a blow tube instead of connecting one. And it can be a little bit harder to pull points on these larger tubes, but it does save on prep work. Cause trying to cut them or melt them down, especially after you cut them, just takes a lot of time. Pull out a little bit of glass to speed things up and then melt in the rest. Before I blow out the vessel, I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice base heat into it. I'll take it out of the flame, kind of let it rest. I'll sip some of my delicious home brewed coffee. And then by getting that nice base heat in and just letting it kind of radiate, you get a very even blowout when you do finally heat it up. And that's what I'm doing here. And before you blow it into it, you do want to wait a few seconds again for it to just radiate to even out. And then you blow and you just see that very nice even orange all the way around. And that will make sure that your bubbles just blow out very evenly and just very spherical. And I'll try to get more of that neck where that blow tube is attached uh, blown out more evenly. But you really have to be careful uh, heating up that blow tube too much because that front weighs a lot and it'll just start to slump down. But here I think I got it pretty well. Now I'm gonna go in to open up a couple holes and I'll just heat up one little spot there and give it a little bit of a puff. I'm actually not looking to blow the hole out right now. I just wanna puff it out to thin that wall out. Because I'm gonna go on the opposite side and do the same thing here. And when I blow out one of the holes, it's gonna be very hard to get the next one blown out because all that air pressure is just gonna go out that first one. So that's why it helps to blow out that little bubble first to kind of prep it ahead of time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the reamer to open up this hole a little bit. And there's a little bit of a difference between using the reamer and the jacks when opening up small holes. And what I find is with that spring with the jacks, it can tend to pull the glass out and make kind of like a little channel. Whereas the brass reamer sometimes could push the glass in. And it's a little bit better as you blow the vessel out to leave the walls a little thicker if you're planning to do holes just because they won't open up as quickly. It's good to let the vessel cool quite a bit before you do the holes or else the holes will open up very quickly. And here I'm gonna go ahead and attach one of the first blow tubes on the side. It was very hot in the flame attachment there. I'm gonna pull just a little bit. And also if you are working on a nicer product you're planning to sell, 
uh, it is good practice to go around and work on those edges around that connection to make sure that glass evenly flows from the vessel to the tube. And you can't do it all at once. You have to do it in sections just to make sure you don't lose stability in that tube and start to melt it in and collapsing it. Now I'm just brushing uh, a softer flame over the tubing and this is going to allow me to bend it back up to make a little kind of an elbow bend. And I'll go ahead and melt the rest of the tube off right here. And I have to be careful not to splash heat over and start to melt my main tubing that is in my other hand. And that's just one of the challenges uh, when it comes to lamp working or glass blowing. The heat just wants to radiate out in all directions. And I'll go ahead and start on another little tube for the other side. And then remembering to heat up both sides very, very hot before you touch them together and in the flame. And that'll just help from getting air trapped in between that connection. So I'll go ahead and pull a little bit of excess glass out with my tweezers. And then I'll work on this connection a little bit as well. Again, making sure to heat up one section at a time. And I have the torch turned down to a smaller pinpoint flame here. And that's what I love about the versatility of these surface mix torches. They can really go from a small pinpoint flame very easily up to a large encompassing flame. And again, I'll just put a nice little soft heat into this side to bend it down. You can move the project out further to where the flame is cooler but lately I've been uh, using this other flame where I turn the inside stage down lower than my outside stage. But one thing to note with these two stage torches, you always have to have that inside stage running. So you can't just run the outside stage, those 12 ports, or else you'll build up a lot of carbon on those inner six ports. So I prepared another blow tube and I'm gonna start to pick off some glass just so that I can blow out another hole on the bottom of the vessel. And I've got to close off this other tube or else I can't actually blow into it. It won't uh, pressurize. So now I'll turn my torch down to a smaller flame, heat up a little area there and blow out a little bubble and pop it inside the flame so all that bubble trash gets melted in. And that's a term for glass debris that becomes so small and thin that it becomes airborne and it can likely be inhaled into your lungs. As I'm using the jacks here, I'm opening them up, letting that spring kind of pull the glass out, and then I'll finish up with the brass reamer to make sure it's nice and round. And I accidentally tagged the two pieces of glass together for a second, and that's not a problem. It just left a little bit of glass on the vessel. You just have to melt that, that in, or you can just pick it off real quick. But I got a nice clean connection here, and I'm gonna just keep Heating this up a little bit more because I need to make sure this piece is solid because it's holding a lot of weight and also rotating it on axis, of course, keeps everything straight and even. And I'll go ahead and start melting the blow tube off on the opposite end and I'm going to try to bring all three of these blow tubes together into one tube. And when that glass is tagged together, it's essentially bound together on a molecular level. And so then when you heat up and apply heat to it, it will tend to melt together to the surrounding molecules instead of uh, going backwards towards gravity or towards a different force. And I'm using my little graphite paddle to push the ends together here. And I'm gonna grab my long tweezers and pull off some of that excess glass. And as I do that, I notice one of the tubes ends up getting disconnected from the other two. So I'll need to heat up the base of the tube again to increase that elbow bend a little bit more. And bending can actually be kind of a harder process, uh, especially with the ho uh, hollow tubing, as you can end up getting creases or collapsing a little bit of the inside wall. And here I'm just heating up the end and blowing into my blow tube. And as I do that, all three tubes are expanding out evenly. It's pretty cool. I'll just keep heating up that area and blowing it out. And as it expands those side walls, the side tubes will get more of that glass. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to finish this up because then those side tubes are also closed. And as I'm heating it up and blowing in it here one last time, I kind of overdo it and it pops like a bubble. I got a lot of excess, uh, really thin glass there, but it'll melt back in really quickly. That's what I've said once before about uh, when those molecules or the just the glass walls get so thin 
that you get a much different reaction than what you would normally expect. You know, the glass becomes more conductive, it becomes flexible. Now I got some excess glass here on the back of this rim. I'm gonna clean up with a clear rod. I'll just heat up that rim real hot. I'll leave the rod cool and swipe along. And it always leaves a little dab of glass at the end, which I usually just grab and swipe back the opposite direction to smooth it all out. And now to my surprise, those side tubes are actually open. I think they opened up when the bubble popped. You know, I was afraid there'd be a thin membrane of glass uh, closing off those tubes. So I was thinking ahead of time, how would I open up those tubes like that? But I guess I don't have to. And I just went ahead and melted off that blow tube. And you might have noticed I cut off the blow tube a couple inches below that connection. And that's just to keep it from shocking that area because there's a lot of stress, not just from the connection, but from the bubble being blown out. And now I'm gonna grab my beeswax and just rub it a little bit on this tube and see what kind of marks it leaves on the beeswax. Now let me know if it's ready for me to grab and hold. Because sometimes projects just become too awkward to do anything else than hold them with your hands. Now I'm gonna heat up the bottom very evenly and use my graphite paddle to flatten out a base. And you would normally wanna do this on your desk. I just have it up here so you can see it. And one last trick here, you can heat up the bottom and hold it upside down or even suck air out of the vessel and that will give you a concave bottom and a nice rim for it to sit on. But of course you never wanna inhale if there's a hole in the vessel because then you could inhale hot gases into your lungs. Whereas when it's sealed, you're only just getting a little bit from the blow tube. And here's the finished product. It's looking pretty cool. One of the first things I did was put some water in it and rotate it like this. And you'll see how it goes higher on one tube than the others, depending on which slide it's sloped at. But then I think of cooler aspects, when you move it back and forth like this, you get the water going up and down those outside tubes. And then e even cooler in one direction, you'll see that the water will flow higher in that back tube and sink in that front tube. And that just shows you how the force reacts when you move it like that. So that's a cool little experiment to study forces, but I thought it'd be fun to drop some food coloring in there and see what happens. Some green, blue, and red. Maybe we'll have a little race, see who wins. And the blue begins to slow down a little bit. I'm gonna have to uh, turn on the turbos for him, add a little more in there. And green becomes the victor. You'll notice that straight tube, that green is just going pretty much straight down. Whereas the blue and the red want to go along the sides of the tube. And even as it enters the larger vessel, it's not really going towards the green. It's just kind of seeping along the side. I really like how that green is kind of flowing in there like a ribbon. And at the bottom is kind of coming up. That's pretty cool. I think we'll have to try this again. So I'll try the blue and red on the outsides first, and then I'll pour in the green. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I was planning to upload this on the glass smith side, but I figured as big as this project is, and as it's more of a finished project, I'm gonna do it on the glass science uh, playlist. It does have a lot of science related aspects to it and it involves a lot of different techniques where the Glasssmith uh, series is meant to focus on one technique at a time in case uh, a glass blower might need to look back at a certain thing. You can do it very quickly there. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along with the channel. So I'm thinking the next addition to the channel will actually be another camera. That way you can get an additional view and get a better understanding of the action going on. All right, thanks for watching and have a good day.